bring up next, we've got Corey Bellick. He's a CEO of Can Alaska Uranium. So Corey, take it away, please. Well, thank you, David. And thank you, Red Cloud, for hosting this event. It's a real pleasure to be here today to talk about Can Alaska. We're built on uranium, copper, and nickel. Again, it's about investing in that carbon-free energy future. You generate clean electricity, you move it with copper, and you got to store and deliver it to the end user with sulfide nickel. And that's what we've done with our portfolio. We've built it in this space. And really, there's no better time if you want to make your fortune in the green energy space to be into one of these three primary metals. So Canalaska has got a portfolio that can de deliver that for you. Why are we excited about our portfolio? Well, in 2021, we believe we're on the cusp of major discoveries. Why do we say that? Because Waterbury South delivered a brand new polymetallic zone of mineralization just 10 kilometers from the Scar Lake mine, two kilometers off that haul road. We followed that up in the summer with further high grade mineralization at our West MacArthur project. That's a joint venture with Cameco, just 12 kilometers from the MacArthur River mine. And then we followed that up again with our Moon Lake South joint venture with Denison. The first ever drilling program there intersected two new zones of uranium mineralization right near their Griffin and Phoenix deposits. So we had a great year on three of our uranium projects out in the eastern Athabasca Basin around all that critical infrastructure. We're a well-structured company. We're ready for the upturn. We've got 102 million shares outstanding, 144 million fully diluted. Management's along for the ride, owning uh, four and a half, eight and a half percent, depending on which of those you look at. Uh, the uranium price is well known to be up around uh, the mid fifties now, $52 a pound, I think last week. So it's moving, it's settling at that level and we're ready for that upturn. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you're gonna see value here in the near term in Can Alaska's portfolio through discovery. We've got a very strong board and technical team. We've got 140 years of Athabasca experience. Within that experience are, dis are the discovery of the Cigar Lake mine, that high grade tier one asset of Camel and Aranos. Uh, we've also got uh, involvement in the discovery of the Fox Lake deposit through, uh, through my new VP, Nathan Bridge, among other uh, deposits he's worked on. And myself, 25 years in the nuclear space, uh, predominantly with Cameco prior to Can Alaska. So a real strong team. We can work this portfolio. We're getting results. We pride ourselves on being that active explorer and project generator. We generate projects. We bring outside investment in through deals to move those projects forward. We also explore on the key projects where we see value for our shareholders through immediate discovery. And it's the ones that are responding to our efforts. It's all to minimize dilution for the shareholders, but maximize their capital gain. Again, front end discovery of these major tier one type Athabasca Basin assets. We had great 2021. We drilled uh, three projects in uranium, one in copper, and also uh, moved forward on some deals uh, through that span, all bringing in outside investment to our portfolio to move, move our portfolio forward. Uranium space, you don't really need to talk about the global, global scenario, but I will touch on the fact that small modular reactors are real. They're here, they're not fantasy. In May of 2022, Westinghouse and SRC in Saskatoon announced the build of a five megawatt micro reactor for the Saskatoon area. That's a small market, small reactor, going to bring power to Saskatoon. In Ontario, in December of last year, Darlington announced that they're building 300 megawatts of SMR um, power production. That's all coming in 2028. That's six years away. This is real. This is going to be a game changer for the nuclear space, opening up new markets like Saskatoon. And what it really means is we need more uranium. So what do we have in front of us in 2022 starting today? Well, we're actively this week going out to our West MacArthur project. We started drilling with two rigs, trying to advance our discovery there. We've been drilling 8% uranium right near Cameco's MacArthur River mine. Then we're gonna move into the Key Extension project, 10 kilometers away from the Key Lake Mill, Cameco's Key Lake Mill, historic production of 150 plus million pounds. We're on that Key Lake structure. We got access to this project last fall. We're gonna move that forward in the fall of this year. And we continue to drill on our high grade nickel prospects through our new, new partnership with Metal Energy. We came through the winter program with uh, drilling every hole hitting nickel mineralization. They've moved to phase two. They're gonna drill 10,000 meters this summer in that space. So stay tuned for all of this activity in Can Alaska's portfolio, along with new deals coming in on several of these projects. We're centered in the Eastern Athabasca Basin. We've got over 300,000 hectares principally around all that critical infrastructure in the East where there's a need. We've built that incredible portfolio in the nickel space and the Thompson nickel belts, the fifth largest sulfide nickel belt on the planet, in the neighboring, neighboring uh, province of Manitoba, a great place to be up against Valet. 
In terms of uranium, our portfolio spans everything from shallow targets like Next Gen's Arrow or, or Eagle Point of Cameco, right through to MacArthur River in the deeper sandstone. We can use this to an advantage out in the deeper sandstone. Don't be scared of it. We can use the alteration of halos associated with these large tier one uranium deposits to help vector, to help target into where we can drill that 8% uranium. And that's exactly what we're doing at West MacArthur. We've got a, a really great uranium story unfolding at West MacArthur. We've been drilling up to 8% uranium, again, right near that critical infrastructure, MacArthur River, here you see it on the right, that's the haul road that takes the ore to Key Lake. We're just two kilometers away on the same structural system, same mineralized corridor as Cameco's large Fox Lake deposit, 70 million pounds, average grade 8%. We're on that structural corridor, we're drilling 8% uranium, we've got a large alteration halo, and we're following up these results starting this week. We're excited about this target. The 42 zone discovery where we get this high grade is already 120 meters in strike length. It's 60 meters wide. It's open in multiple directions. It's on that critical mineralized corridor that hosts Fox Lake. We've got pearls on a string here concept. All these deposits occur like pearls on a string. We think 42 zone is just one of those pearls and we're looking for those other ones. Most of cigar, most of MacArthur River sits in one of these pearls, six or 300 million pounds sits in under hundred meter strike length. That's the size of the prize. We're going to go find it. We've got a large alteration halo at 42 zone here shown roughly to scale to Cigar Lake. Cigar Lake is a large deposit over 200 million pounds. On the left hand side, we've got a large alteration system associated with our 42 zone, 300 meters wide, seven, 800 meters up into the sandstone. Again, associated with that high grade mineralization near the unconformity. And again, looking for other pearls. We're drilling 8% uranium here already, and we're drilling high-grade mineralization last fall even better than the prior intersections of 42 zones. So we're really excited about where this can grow and where it can grow nearby, close to this mineralized, uh, mineralized event. Two kilometers away, we hit a new zone of alteration with uranium enrichment for several hundred meters up into the sandstone with an 80 meter fault zone, just two kilometers from that 42 zone. Again, thinking about those pearls and finding where there's another event happening. We might be onto it here. We're really excited about it. This is one of the targets we're gonna be following up this summer. Further along strike, we completed new geophysics out to the west. Again, trying to follow that corridor and where it goes. And we've identified at least four new target areas where they have not been tested by drilling. We could not explain the target in historical work, now we're on to a redefining of those targets and we're gonna go out and test those with one of the rigs to help look for that major structural event and alteration corridor continuance. We're really excited about what the future holds because we're shaping up new uranium targets in and around 42 zone around the Fox Lake deposit. And importantly, Cameco's MacArthur River mine when it restarts has only about 15 years of reserve life left. The Key Lake mill needs a tier one deposit to feed it. We've got an opportunity with our partner Cameco to make that discovery and benefit from that infrastructure and that need that they have at Key Lake. Imagine a world where three of those mills in Eastern Athabasca are not producing uranium. That could be 15 years away. Rabbit Lake's already offline. McLean goes offline in about seven years when Cigar runs out of ore and you've got the, the MacArthur River story ending in about 15. That's a critical piece to understand for the longer term future of uranium production out of the Athabasca Basin. Our new project, Key Extension, we're really excited about it. It's 10 kilometers away from that Key Lake mill that needs that feed in 15 years. It's on the same fault that's host to already 150 million pounds of uranium historically. This has never been drilled. We did new geophysics, outlined new targets. Each of these targets are the size that could host a next gen aero deposit or an Eagle Point deposit, basement hosted targets. The blue is an indication of potential alteration in the basement along this structure. This is exactly what you want to see, the size of anomaly, the intensity of anomaly that you might find associated with an arrow or eagle point. Again, never been drilled by a drill hole anywhere on this property. We've got mineralized boulders already identified on the property along with outcrop nearby, shown on this figure. We're really excited about the opportunity in front of us at Key Extension. We're going to get to that this fall. We've got a large portfolio. Again, like others in this, in this uh, discussion, we're looking to bring outside investment into it to help move them forward. We can't do it all. We don't wanna do it all, but we generated these projects and we're happy to announce uh, recently a deal that will bring $15 million um, of investment from the ASX in Australia through Basin Energy that's gonna move one of these projects forward. A lot, a lot of that money is gonna move one of these new projects forward at Geike, which is right near 92 Energy and Baseload's uh, operations or discoveries, just a few kilometers away, same targets, same corridors, exact same scenario. 
we've got it and we're moving it forward through a new partnership that's going to bring significant investment into us probably starting around august september of this year we'll be on the ground exploring this property for the very first time piece two to Ken alaska i mentioned it the nickel space no one wanted to talk about uranium post fukushima project generation thinking about that electrification of the planet generating clean electricity moving it with copper storing and delivering it with nickel we developed an incredible district scale sulfide nickel portfolio in the neighboring province of manitoba the fundamentals of nickel mirror that of uranium we're number two in land holdings only to valet in this belt we've got over 200,000 hectares of land in the sulfide nickel space all through the Thompson Nickel Belt. Nobody was paying attention to it for the last five years when it was when it was coming open. We staked it. We're bringing in new deals through partnerships like Metal Energy, where they're going to invest $4 million into this project. They've gone through phase one in the winter. Every single hole on the Manor Bridge project intersected nickel mineralization. We're waiting on assays for that. And importantly, they've gone to phase two, where they're going to drill 10,000 meters through this summer on that target, moving it to the next phase of understanding. Stay tuned for a lot of news flow out of the nickel space for Can Alaskan and shareholders. These are great properties, again, ignored, not touched with recent exploration efforts for the last 20, 30, maybe 40 years. There's an opportunity here to go out, apply new technology, apply some new thinking and make discoveries. We're currently looking for ways to monetize this for our shareholders to get maximum value in what is a very hot nickel market. We've also got copper. Uh, we drilled last year with a new partner, Amanika, in the Quinell Trough in Central BC. We hit copper mineralization on that very first program. We've got a great project near the Rutan, past producing Rutan copper zinc mine in Central Manitoba, a target that's the same scale, same character, and has mineralization associated with it. Again, looking for partners to help move the copper portfolio forward. So we believe we tick all the boxes. Importantly, we're advancing new discoveries in 2022 at West MacArthur, maybe Key Extension, uh, Waterbury South, and, um, and getting ready for, uh, for what looks to be a great future in the uranium, copper, and nickel space as part of that clean energy environment or electrification of the planet. And we believe we're well positioned to provide maximum shareholder value through major discoveries in any of those. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Corey.